Hello and welcome. This is the Collision Conference. I'm in the AWS wing where Cohere has a booth. Collision is a massive conference. There's so many different people and companies here. There are a lot of established companies, but also startups and mid-sized companies. I thought it would be interesting to be just a look at what is the status of how is AI being sold? How is AI and language models sort of rolling out into industry? How are people writing their marketing copy around uh, AI? And what sort of interesting products are there? So let me take you and have some conversations with some of the more interesting um, AI specific companies. This is not an AI conference. This is a general tech conference, but I've identified a few uh, that are AI companies that could be interesting to, to talk with. So let's go and do just that. We are providing AI power dubbing solution, leveraging the generative AI technologies. We make a dubbing voice with original actor's voice. And also we make a very naturally movement aligned with the foreign language voice. Okay, so the problem is like if you watch a dubbed film, it's kind of jarring because you yeah. see the lips in the original language that is shot, but then AI is advanced enough now that you can change the, right. the visual itself, right. right? Right. Okay. Could you speak a little bit about how do you do that? What is the sort of the technology about yeah. behind that? We, we utilize um, two main technologies. First one is uh, speech to speech voice conversion, which swap the voice from the uh, from the source voice to target voice. Second AI technology is about the video synthesis technologies. Our target customers is um, media tech, media companies like uh, film distributors, film makers, or OTT platforms as well, and also the animation or game makers. Okay, and so this is kind of interesting because you're dealing with a multilingual problem, right? Yeah, right. Dubbing is one language and then you're making sort of communication easier across languages. How does that reflect on the technology, the models, like are all the models multilingual, for example? This kind of models, actually, technically they are very language agnostic models because the, uh, it's based on the speech to speech technology, which means that um, if the English, uh, English sound comes and then English sound out, with another voice, we utilize multimodal multimodal models. Actually, we we need two kinds of data with sound, with sound and the video. Yeah, no, that's, uh, a, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, the multimodality is very interesting yeah. because, like, the model needs to see the image, but also needs to see the audio, yeah, and then it can sort exactly. of map map mm -hmm. them together. Elephus Care is a product for long-term care specifically, uh, seniors living with dementia. We non-visually can monitor and track activity in a resident's room looking for changes in daily activity that could indicate a change in functional status or an underlying medical condition that could lead to a fall. We also instantly detect an alert for any fall that happens. Okay, so you said non-visually, so it's not a camera. No, um, as the problem with any camera-based solution is that most falls occur when seniors are going from uh, the bed to the washroom. And bedrooms and washrooms have obvious privacy implications for any vision-based solution. Uh, our solution is RF-based, it's radar-based. There's absolutely no visual input of any kind. Okay, and how, how is the prevention part of it? So detection, maybe I can detect a fall, I can train, a, I don't know, a classifier to do yeah. that. How is the prevention part sort of work? What we can do when we detect movement in bed prior to the senior attempting to exit their bed, we can intelligently route an alert via a mobile app to the closest caregiver to that room and give them time to intervene before the fall has taken place. One additional company I talked with is TuneSquare. They're building tools to simplify writing and illustrating comic books using AI image generation. Their AI image generation service, called Tuning Magic, presents user interface options instead of relying completely on prompts. I think we'll see more and more of these types of inputs where they can help uh, give you ideas instead of just staring at a blank uh, prompt text box. They then tie this up 
with uh, another product that they have, which is used to edit comics. It's kind of like seeing how Adobe adopted these generation models in Photoshop. We are trying to uh, focus on the AI technology, and uh, we try to enhance the, a lot of the learning data. The user need to uh, doesn't worry about the copyright. Uh, our solution is our data. If it's AI-generated images, how is it different from Stable Diffusion or from Mid Journey? And you're focused specifically on a specific use case for comics. Yeah, basically, the same. You know, the main core technology is Stable Diffusion, but the, uh, our data is totally different. Mid Journey also they have uh, their own style. The, our style is uh, focused on the webtoon. Okay, so you've maybe fine-tuned or like trained and for specific styles. Yes. Uh, and you have a, a book here that sort of uh, shows a little bit of those uh, styles, correct? Yes. But this was all generated by the, by the model, correct? Yes. As a creator, you can save your time and you can even make the money with this platform. The user, if they have a series, they can be a creators. This was a quick glance at Collision and some of the conversations I've had there and uh, some of the interesting things I've seen. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.